Once you've declared the data members for your class, the next step is to create a set of constructor methods. Constructor methods allow you to instantiate your object with data at the time that you declare the object. The way you write a constructor method is start with the keyword public followed by the name of the class. Constructor methods always have the name of the class. Followed by the parameters that you want. So for example, if I want to set a time object with hours, minutes, and seconds, then I'm going to have three parameters for hours, minutes, and seconds. Then in the body of the constructor, you assign the parameter to the data member. So notice I'm not doing any data validation on these data members. I'm going to save that for another lesson in this chapter. Right now I just want to demonstrate how to create constructors. So there's a full constructor method. Sometimes it's called a fully parameterized constructor because we have a parameter for each one of the data members. To use that constructor in the main program, we'll use the data type time, followed by the name of our object, followed by the assignment operator, the keyword new, which lets the compiler know that you're calling the constructor, followed by the name of the class, and then the arguments, just like so. So now I have a time object with hour 7, minute 15, and seconds 0. You can have multiple constructors in a class definition. So for example, if I wanted to only set the hours and minutes of a time object, I would create a constructor with two parameters, one for the hour, one for the minutes. And then I would just set the seconds to a default value, such as 0. So I can call the constructor like this. And now I have two time objects, one set to 7, 15, one set to 8. I can have a third constructor with just one of the parameters set. And here you'd have to decide if you wanted it to be hours or minutes. We'll say hours. Minutes equals 0 and seconds equals 0. One of the things you want to do with your class design is make your class as flexible as possible. So you want to have as many constructor methods as you think the user will need in working with your class. Remember, when you think about designing a class, think about not only how you would use it, but how other people would use it also. And then finally, we can write something called a default constructor. The default constructor takes no arguments and sets the parameters to a default value for the data type. So for hours, minutes, and seconds, that default value would be zero since they're all integers and zero is the default value for integers. It turns out that if you don't create a default constructor but yet try to use it, the compiler will automatically assign those data members their default values. So you don't actually have to write a default constructor, but it's a good idea to do so so that the user of your class can see what's implied by default construction. And when you make a call to the default constructor, it'll look like this. One last thing we need to talk about before we leave the subject of constructors is that the reason we can have multiple methods with the same name is due to a concept called overloading. Overloading means you can have methods with the same name as long as the signature is different. And by the signature, we're mostly talking about the parameter list. So for example, this first constructor has a parameter list of three. The second constructor has a parameter list of two. The third constructor has a parameter list of 1, and the last constructor, the default constructor, has a parameter list of 0. The compiler can keep this straight because when you make the call to the constructor, it sees three arguments, so it knows to go find the constructor with three parameters, like so. So overloading is an important concept in object-oriented programming, and it allows you to have extreme flexibility in being able to use method names over and over again as long as you modify the parameter list. That's about all there is to say now about constructors, so let's move on to the next lesson where we talk about how to retrieve data from our class using what are called property methods.